PNH 4100 XPC is one of the largest electric mining shovels in the world. It was previously produced by TWH Collectibles in 187th scale, and after a lengthy development period they've produced this version in 150 scale. The real machine is huge, so is the model, and therefore the packaging is on a grand scale. There's an outer shipping box, and then inside that there's a large black TWH box, and inside that is the model in a PNH branded sleeve, which contains a couple of huge expanded polystyrene trays. Unpacking the model is best done by two people, but before you open up the trays, get the instruction books out because they give advice as to how to lift the model. When you're ready, you can lift the lid and you can find the model snugly sitting in the bottom tray, but before going any further, it's worth marking up the positions of some of the loose pieces of uh, packing so that it's easier to repack the model if you ever want to move it. When you've done that, you can strip away the pieces and uh, get ready to uh, lift the model out. But there are a couple of words of caution here. One is that the model has quite a lot of delicate parts in terms of the hand railing that surrounds the model. So be careful where you lift it so you don't damage those. And the second thing is it is extremely heavy. So if you don't want a bad back, make sure you uh, know how to lift a heavy weight properly because this is one very heavy model. Included with the model are three brochures. The first is a, an instruction sheet by TWH. It shows on the front how to lift the model. Uh, on the left is the instructions for um, operating the, the model. And there's a bit about installing the batteries and getting the working LED lights going. Um, the second brochure is a general P&H brochure about their full range of uh, products. And it's got some useful and interesting uh, general information, nothing too technical. And the third brochure is um, a specific brochure about the p &H, uh, shovel line and um, that's got some more information about shovels in particular and some technical information about the um, 4100 XPC, although in fact you'd probably like a bit more than that brochure gives you. Also included are a couple of batteries so you don't need to rush out and buy those. Um, a small bag of a couple of handrail parts and uh, a rather large metal winding key for operating the model. Although it's very well packed it's not surprising that some of the metal handrails get a little bent during shipping but they're easy enough to straighten out you just need to be a little bit careful and gently bend them and ease them back into a straight position. There are a couple of minor ties to undo one releases the electric cable and the second just releases the drop down ladder. TWH are fitted nearly all the handrails in the factory but there are a couple of pieces to uh, fix yourself and here's one just slotting into place um, but they fit in the holes okay but they're quite a loose fit so a better idea perhaps is just to put a little piece of uh, plastic putty or something like that on and just push that into the holes and uh, if you take a little bit of time just to trim it up and make it uh, look okay then you can get the handrail to stand in straight. Um, you could glue the handrails, but the reason these pieces are supplied separately is because when you lift the boom, the two pieces they supply would in fact be knocked out of position and probably broken. So that's why you have to fit them separately. We'll start at the bottom for our look at the detail and the track frames are really heavy construction. Uh, with good casting detail and the track links themselves are also very heavy metal pieces. The big track drive motors are modelled well as is the boom for the electrical connection and there's a nice looking plug for the electric cable. The metal stairs, walkways and handrails are all top quality and there's some really good small graphics around the model. Moving up to the roof there's more excellent mesh walkway panels and handrails and there are some great roof lights with warning notices and protection bars. The cables supporting the boom are steel coloured and a good job has been done to give them all an equal tension. Alongside the cab are a couple of really well detailed air conditioning units and the inside of the cab has a couple of seats, a console and some cabinets. Also around the whole model are the adjustable floodlights and they look really good. There are some fire extinguishers dotted around and moving to the back the Air Scrub Pro has its distinctive shape with further painted detail. The boom is a very heavy box section and there are a couple of metal rope wheels at the top. And there are yet more nice metal walkways at the connection of the dipper handle. 
The dipper is a very heavy piece of modelling with very thick walls. Um, the rivets used to secure it are silver and would have been better painted black, but the teeth are really good, very detailed. The structure of the flap is modelled well with a working latch mechanism and there's a great casting detail on the side of the dipper which is the P&H emblem. It's straight on with the features and the first one is the rolling test and we can't get the tracks to roll on a smooth surface so if we try it on something rougher there's still too much friction in the tracks for them to roll. However, if you put the model on its side, which is not really recommended, you can see that the tracks can be made to roll. The tracks have working rollers on the underside, but even so, these are heavy components and so there's a bit of friction in them. The tracks are spring-loaded also to keep the tension and it does allow them to be removed if you want. On the side of the machine is a staircase which should lower to the ground to allow people to get on or off. But there is a problem with the model in that the staircase will not lower properly to the ground and that appears to be a modelling error. It's not a big problem but it's a pity it wasn't ironed out at the prototype stage. On the other side of the machine is the vertical access ladder which goes up and down. Um, it's a little bit tricky to get it to stay in place uh, raised um, because there's no kind of really working latch or anything that keeps it up. So uh, a way around that is to uh, perhaps put a bit of a bend in it, just a slight bend and then if you raise it, um, it will just kind of lock itself into place, which is better. You have to be a little bit careful with that ladder because if you leave it down and then swing the model around uh, strongly, um, it will damage the ladder piece. Up on top, there are a couple of opening doors. At the rear is an empty cupboard and you can only wonder what goes on in there, although the door does have a window so you would be able to see. And the cab door opens nicely too. The opening doors have been implemented well and um, there's no unsightly hinges on the model, which is good. Moving on to the heavier engineering, the model turns really well. It's very smooth, um, an excellent bearing mechanism uh, produced here by TWH. It's only by lifting the model up that you can realise how heavy it is and that therefore how good this uh, swing mechanism is. To operate the raising and lowering of the dipper, you use the key and put it into the uh, force window of a cab, which is um, a smart piece of design and you push it in and then turn the key. And the thing to really remember here is is that, that the dipper at the end of the handle is very very heavy and you have to keep a tight hold of the key. Best not to do this on your finest antique surface. To move the dipper handles in and out you push the key into the boom and turn it to drive the pinions. This works quite well but it has more of a friction brake than a mechanical lock and so it will hold the dipper in any position you want but it is prone to uh, slipping if you knock the model but with care you can pose the dipper pretty well in any position that you want to display. To empty the dipper you open the flap at the back and to do that you can wind on this little winch uh, which pulls the cable which if you pull it you'll see that it lifts a latch and then that allows the dipper flap to open although on the review model you can see it's not really free swinging and so you have to kind of pull it down by hand if it's empty. The final feature to look at is the working LED lighting and the batteries that power that are stored underneath the rear of the machine so you just undo a screw which allows a flap to be removed and there's the battery compartment and just on the left there is the switch that actually operates the lights. Um, you then just pop the batteries in um, very straightforward just like you would do on any uh, normal electrical appliance and uh, when you've got the batteries in before you put the cover back on it's worth just having a check of the lights to check that they're working and flick the switch and they go on and off which is good and then you can just screw the cover back up. TWH have done a very good job with these lights because they are LED lights so they are very bright if you pose the model in a darkened room it can really change the way that you actually look at it. The lights are spread all around the model and they seem quite realistic. With the lights on you can now run your mine day and night and as you can imagine here at Cranes Etc we've been running 24-7 to get this model review done. This is a massive model and its size and weight alone is enough to impress anyone even if they're not a model collector. The model engineering works well enough 
and the working lights are a worthwhile feature. The standard of the detailing is excellent and the finish and quality of the model is very good overall. Sitting in front of you on the desk, it is an outstanding model.